So we're going to use this time to talk about land use and transportation. As this image suggests, land use is part of a larger story in terms of our mobility goals for more sustainable and more resilient communities. It's represented on the bottom edge of this triangle. Along the left edge, we see Transportation Systems Management and Operations, TISMO. It's a different set of strategies, a complementary set of strategies for achieving our mobility goals. It has to do with making the most effective use of our existing capacity so that we can postpone additional expansion in our capacity. We can postpone additional expansion by operating what we have more effectively. Along the right edge, that's the demand side of the equation. It's a complementary set of tools, um, policies and programs that motivate users to uh, ride share, uh, to use transit instead of drive, to walk or bike, um, maybe change time of day, change um, the destination, fewer trips, telecommuting, anything that reduces the demand on the system. And before we give our exclusive attention to the connection between land use and transportation, I want to say a few words about the other two sides of the triangle. So we begin with TISMO. According to the Federal Highway Administration, TISMO is a set of strategies, strategies focused on operational improvements for maximizing the performance of existing systems before extra capacity is needed. As you can imagine, new capacity, new lanes, new rail miles, uh, these are expensive and environmentally challenging and whatever we can do to manage what we've got more efficiently and postpone the need for that additional investment is often appreciated. So this list of strategies includes things that are commonly utilized to manage peak period, uh, surges in demand, things like ramp metering and traffic signal coordination for uh, periodic events like uh, collisions, stalled vehicles, or sporting events, concerts, we have a different set of operational strategies. We also have some operational strategies that are tuned to specific user groups, uh, commercial vehicle operators, transit operators, and even some that are specific to non-motorized travel, um, bicycle and ped users of the system. So moving on to Transportation Demand Management, or TDM, we see that FHWA has recognized that it was once fairly narrowly defined. It was all about ride-sharing carpool lanes in order to be compliant with air quality uh, goals. More recently, uh, TDM has been uh, more broadly defined. A more contemporary definition of TDM would be all about maximizing travel choices. This could include car sharing, ride hailing, micro mobility, uh, e-scooter rental, uh, and much more. There's a TDM tool that's not explicitly represented here that's worth mentioning, and that's the out-of-pocket costs that users face, particularly when it comes to parking. When parking is expensive, people are incentivized to find um, other ways to get where they're going. Instead of driving their private vehicle, they might search out for a public transit option, a walking or biking option, and the like. So what does the Federal Highway Administration have to say about land use and its connection to transportation? And what we find is that FHWA is endorsing regional growth strategies featuring compact development. That means more residential units per acre, more square feet of office per acre, more square feet of shopping per acre, and also endorsing a mix of uses so that retail, office, and shopping are in close proximity to one another, and that new investment in land development happen where transit is available and where pedestrians feel comfortable. Where this happens, we see an increase in non-auto trips. We see fewer vehicle miles of travel, we see less uh, pollution in the air, we see healthier bodies because of the more active ways of getting about, and less impact on agricultural land-sensitive habitats and other natural resources. 
and always, always sensitive to the local context because while this riverfront business district master plan might be suitable for Wuhan, China or Las Vegas, Nevada, I doubt it would be welcome in Boulder, Colorado or San Luis Obispo, California. And that's why context sensitivity is at the center of this triangle. We want to be knowledgeable about the hyper-local needs, values, the cultural and historical perspectives before we start making recommendations about increasing land use density, about diversifying, about introducing transit-oriented development.